it now? Should I just leave it? Yeah, I'll leave it. It's okay. I'm going to call the. Uh, can, am, am I, there we are. I'm going to call the board members, please, to head uh, up here behind the screen, where we'll hide them. Yeah, come back here. Just give us about two minutes, and then we'll start the board Q and A session, um, and we'll give you some more details about that. So just look out. We were going to ask them all to sit here after Sue's talk and then just raise the screen, but that seemed a little creepy. <laughs> just like, like they've got nothing better to do. Okay, one second. First of all, um, can, can everybody hear me behind me? Am I hearable? You can't hear me? It's low. Can you, can you guys turn, can you get them to turn that mic up here? The podium mic? No, really. Okay. She's going to the front. There's one. It's like, where did some of them go? What happened? Did you fall under the table? Okay. Great. And can you guys, can you do a little quick mic check on your, on your microphones there? Check, check. That's a Jimmy Wells microphone check. check. Excellent. Hello, Wikimania. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to be your MC for the uh, next hour or so. We're probably going to go a little tiny bit over time through this board Q&A, but it'll be worth it. I promise you. Um, and after I'm done here, uh, Jeremy will come back up and, and walk us through what happens next. Um, so this is a tradition every year, I believe every single year at Wikimania, if there has been a board question and answer period. It's pretty much uh, identical to the qu question and answer period we did with Sue, and you've been doing question and answer periods for the last three, two, two or three days, so this is all familiar to you. Um, first I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the board members today. Uh, I'm going to introduce them quickly, and then I'm going to ask them to uh, take on the, uh, a quick question or tell, tell us a little bit about themselves. Um, what's been on their mind perhaps around Wikimania. Quick uh, one minute each for that. Uh, and Phoebe uh, has uh, kindly been soliciting requests for questions from you and from everybody in the movement. So uh, we'll be uh, tackling some of those questions and then we'll be, we'll be asking you also to participate um, by raising your hand and doing it just like we were doing it a second ago. Uh, once again, we've got about an hour for that. And then the board will want to chat with us uh, um, and do some, uh, some important recognitions. So, a little bit about our board. And I'm gonna read from some, some notes here, which we don't usually do, but. Um, this is the formal guiding organization for the Wikimedia Foundation. Many of you know who they are, um, and you've probably been talking to them for, all, for a couple of days. I don't wanna make any presumptions though, so we're just gonna cover some, some of this territory. Uh, this board works really, really closely with uh, the foundation's executive director, Sue Gardner, who we just spoke. Um, they're helping us develop strategic guidance for the uh, foundation and to provide financial accountability and uh, organizational leadership. The, they are a unique board. Um, they are pretty much accessible to anyone here. I don't know of many other boards that are as absolutely porous and accessible and reachable and who spend so much time doing the reaching and the communicating as the Wikimedia Foundation board. Um, you, can, uh, you can find them on uh, on, uh, you can find them here, you can find them at conferences and meetups around the world, you can find them on email discussion lists, on wiki, on IRC, have I missed anything everywhere? Telepathy, perhaps? Um, in total, what's that? I got it. You got, did you hear? I'm just gonna be silent and let everybody listen to their, t their, their mind traffic. Okay, there are 10 seats on the board. Not everybody's here today. I'll talk a little bit about uh, everybody when we have the full, full roster. Um, and according to the bylaws, three of these members are elected by you, by the Wikimedia community. Um, two of them are selected by the Wikimedia chapters, also more or less by you. Uh, and the founder seat is held by Jimmy Wales. And then four members are also appointed by the board itself to provide additional expertise. Uh, the newest member of, the newest appointed member of the foundation's board of trustees is Anna Tony, who is not able to make it here today. Um, she participated, I think, on your meetings by Skype the other day. Um, and is uh, currently the CEO for, the, for GIP, Public Interest Management, a consultancy firm based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 
uh, which works for foundations, nonprofit organizations, and businesses on social and environmental issues. She lives in, she's a Brazilian and she lives in Rio de Janeiro. Um, also not here today, unfortunately, sending uh, his regrets is Stu West, who many of you probably have met uh, over the course of the last few years. He has uh, been an active member of the board since 2008. He's a finance executive based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, he's held leadership roles at TiVo, Yahoo, Infospace, and most recently he's currently actually uh, working for Automatic, which many of you would know from uh, their product, WordPress. In June 2004, the announcement for the community elections process was made. Uh, let's try that again, in June 2013. <laughs> it's, been, it's, been, it's been known for a while, we've just gotten around to covering it. So just recently, in fact two months ago, um, we announced uh, uh, the community process uh, election took place and just actually the other day we sort of formally approved, uh, the board formally approved the selection of Maria Sepedari who is uh, sitting here, uh, as well as Phoebe Ayers and Samuel Klein. You're all three sitting together. You didn't have to, but you did. <laughs> so these are our community uh, elected folks. Um, and uh, also last week here in Hong Kong, we uh, announced exciting changes to the board officer positions. Most of you probably know uh, our new board chair is Jan Bartha Friede, who's sitting here, also a longtime board member. I'll do a little introduction after this. And uh, Phoebe Ayers, who is our vice chair for the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. Congratulations to both of you. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna do a quick introduction, a little bit about everybody, and then we're gonna hand it over to them. So starting from uh, the other side, and we also have Kat Walsh, who, sorry Kat, um, is our most recent board chair and has been on the board for uh, an extremely long time, so we're excited that you're able to join us today. Um, we can talk to you, can speak to sort of the year in, in past and the future and all things board. Um, so I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm just sort of gonna go through these out of order, but I'm gonna point to you and ask you to sort of raise your hand. Uh, Jan Bart, we see you, you raise your, he's in the middle, we just introduced him. Um, he's a board chair, he's an education and information technology professional. He's working for uh, Kennesnet in the Netherlands. Sounds, that's you, right? Yes? Um, he's served on the board since 2004, which is uh, a long time. No, sorry, you're getting, I'm getting your numbers mixed up. So you've been to 2006, 2000? Yes, 2006, sorry. Phoebe Ayers and the Purple Visual Editor Propaganda Shirt, thank you. Love it. She is, uh, it's a good shirt, they're out there. She's a reference instruction and collections librarian at the University of California in Davis specializing in computer science and engineering information resources. She joined the board initially in 2010, yeah. that's right, two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. She's a longtime Wikipedian and she lives in Davis, not too far from UC Davis, not too far from uh, San Francisco in our headquarters. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Wales, who's sitting here in the middle, you might have heard of him. So he's the founder of Wikipedia. He's a very, very long-time Wikipedian. I don't think you could be more long-time Wikipedian than anyone <laughs> else. <laughs> Although if you have, we should probably talk, it'd be interesting. Uh, he also happens to be the founding member of this board, so your term is basically the term of the board, um, which is exciting. Uh, he uh, spends a lot of his time currently between London and Florida, um, but right now he's here. Uh, Maria Sef Sefidari is sitting here, also one of our newest board members. Um, she's a computer science PhD candidate at the Universidad, Universidad Rey Juan Carlos Yay. in Madrid, <laughs> Spain. Uh, she has been an active Wikimedian since March 2006. She's a founding member and former vice president of Wikimedia España, and she has served as a member of the Affili Affiliations Committee and the Individual Engagement Grants Committee, and she lives in Madrid, Spain. Still currently, yes. We don't want to change that, good. Samuel Klein, sitting here, also known as SJ. Samuel is uh, currently living in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he's working on the Digital Public Library of America. He's a global ambassador for the One Laptop for Child program and advises a number of education startups. He has served on the board since 2009, that's I'm pretty sure correct, yeah, and is an affiliate of Harvard's Berkman Center for Internet and Society. And Alice, Alice, Alice Wiegand, Wiegand, yes, sorry Alice, I never get you, right? we have an international board. Uh, she lives in Dusseldorf, Germany, where she's a personal aide to the mayor of Mirbusch. Uh, she started editing German Wikipedia in 2004 and is a former board member of Wikimedia Deutschland. She has been a trustee since 2012, we're almost there folks. Patricio Lorente, on the far end over there, sporting a Wikimedia t-shirt, is the general pro secretary at La Plata Nacional University in Argentina. He joined Spanish Wikipedia as an editor in 2005, and he's a founding editor, or excuse me, a founding member of Wikimedia Argentina, 
And he, you may remember him from such Wikimanias as 2009. He did this very same thing, and uh, he sort of set a great tradition for us. Member of a board of trustees since 2012. And Vishakadatta is a filmmaker uh, based in filmmaker and author based in Mumbai. She's the co-founder and executive director of Point of View, a nonprofit organization in Mumbai that promotes women's points of view through media, art, and culture. She's also on the board of various nonprofits around the world, including Breakthrough Korea, or is it C R E A or Korea? Vishaka? Korea. Korea. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dreamcatchers Foundation. She's been with the board since 2010. And Kat Walsh, at the very end over here, is our immediate former board chair and a Wikimedian based in the San Francisco Bay Area. She's currently legal counsel at Creative Commons in Mountain View, California, and was previously a technology policy analyst at the American Library Association. Uh, she's been working with the board since 2006. Okay, so folks, um, I'm gonna pass it over to each of you for a moment, um, and then we'll move on to the Q&A. Uh, basically, what we'd like you to do is to just take a quick minute and to walk us through. Um, I'll let each of you just sort of tell us, uh, reflect on your, your viewpoints for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the board session today, um, and then we'll move into some quick questions. Can I invite anybody to start? Just a quick one minute introduction and, uh, and reflection. Yeah, yeah. Some observations. Can we start <coughs> off with our hopes and expectations? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll start. Jan Bart's gonna end. Um, that was, he's the boss, he told me that. <laughs> he said, Jimmy, you go first, I'm gonna end. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah, so I, I think we're entering into a, uh, a really interesting time for the Wikimedia Foundation and for the movement as a whole. Um, we're entering into uh, a period where in, in the search for a new executive director, um, and we are at the Still, I would say at the beginning of the uh, FDC process, um, it's still uh, maturing and growing and we're gonna learn a lot from that. And I think there's gonna be a lot of interesting, uh, and, and interesting is sometimes a euphemism, uh, interesting discussions and debates um, about what is the right direction for the movement, uh, what is the right direction for our organizations, uh, our organizational structure. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that kind of uh, discussion and debate uh, because I do think that we now have, uh, thanks to Sue, as, uh, as she said earlier, we have safety and we have funds uh, and we have the ability to actually uh, do large scale things in a way that in the past uh, we, we couldn't at all and then for a while we were just getting ourselves uh, set up and now we're really poised uh, to, uh, to move forward. So. Okay. okay, so I, uh, sorry, first of all, I wanted to say that this is the first time I've come to Wikimania uh, and flown less than six hours and <laughs> not had to get a visa, so thank you, Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really pleased. Yeah. I just wanted to briefly talk about my three big hopes and expectations for the year ahead. One is, even though Sue is an incredibly hard act to follow, as was evident today, and has taken the foundation from like literally this small thing to this giant body, it is my hope that we will find an executive director who will be able to meaningfully lead the foundation in its next phase or avatar. My second hope is actually that more and more Wikipedians and others will start using the visual editor, contributing feedback, and that we really are able to fulfill the potential of the visual editor. And my third hope is actually that we as a movement, as well as the board, will start thinking of the next five years or the next big sort of chunk of time, looking beyond the sort of problems that we were trying to deal with now, and trying to anticipate, trying to envision, trying to sort of dream up what Wikipedia, what the projects, and what the movement looks, needs to look like in the next, sort of, in the years ahead. Thanks. Okay. Just, yeah, so I should reiterate, too, thank you for sharing your, your vision of your <coughs> expectations for the year ahead. Thanks. Go ahead, Patricio. Yeah. Well, uh, unlike Vishak, I had a 30-plus uh, travel time to get from Argentina to Hong Kong. But I really can't complain because it, it's worth, and also because uh, the Hong Kong people had to do the same 
travel in the opposite direction a few years ago, so uh, I'm completely fine with that. Um, I think we have a continuous uh, permanent challenge uh, in our movement. There is uh, how to build a synergic uh, wikiverse, a synergic environment within all the entities and within all the different local communities that are part of this, uh, of this uh, movement. And uh, uh, my personal goal, my, my personal hope for the next year is to actively contribute to, uh, to reach this goal. That's why uh, I'm a board observer of the two committees, two uh, uh, community committees that deal with these kind of things, that is the Affiliations Committee and the Fans Disseminations Committee. Thank you, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Kat, Kat right. Walsh. So this is going to be the first time in a long time where my thoughts about the coming year are going to be thinking about my role uh, outside the board rather than inside of it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm preparing, of course, for my new role as a troll on the mailing list rather than <laughs> board <right>. member. But <laughs> uh, the first time a troll has gotten applause at Wikimania, so I'm really here. Yeah. But I, I am keeping my role on the search committee for the executive director, and that is going to be a big part of my focus in the coming months. So in thinking about that, there's a lot of changes that are going to be happening, happening over the next year. Uh, we're going to have a new executive director. There's a lot of things that are going to be changing, like the visual editor, which is going to become more prominent. And we're all going to have to think about what those changes mean for us and what's really important for us. Like, what makes us what we are, and what changes do we need to accept that don't make us what we are, that we need to be able to change and accept. And we're just going to have to think about like what these changes mean for us, what's important to stay the same, and what we need to, uh, what we need to let go of to move on to progress in the future. Thank you, Kat. I also want to thank the organizers. This is a beautifully smooth Wikimania, and I know how hard that is. And this has been incredible so far. And just building on the change that I think the foundation will see, uh, what I see is that our community and our audience has been changing very quickly. And for the first time since Wikipedia was founded almost, there's been an enormous amount of intentional outreach to new groups that haven't participated and the growth of mobile has been accelerating, and that's going to bring in people who haven't th thought of themselves as Wikipedians before. So I see this as a year of real demographic change, and how we deal with that in terms of policy formation, fire brigade equivalents, the way we welcome those groups, uh, the way we create you know, new kinds of policies and communities around those new audiences, that will, that will be, make a huge difference. And um, sort of leading up to this, even though it was convergent evolution, we started building new projects. And Wikidata has just taken off amazingly. And I see Wikidata being integrated into all the projects soon, maybe in the next year. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Alice. So I think one of the most uh, and interesting challenges we have to face Beside all those changes we have to uh, challenge is a kind that a kind of making more uh, benefit of what we are doing as a body, as as the foundation's board of trustees. So when people ask me what is the result, what is the outcome of your meeting this year, and everyone was a bit scary if there is a letter or something like that, and there is no letter. Um, I had to say there is not really interesting outcome, no really interesting outcome for you as the community, for you as the movement. So many of the things we were talking about were just internal issues, very boring. And I do think there is a switch which lays in front of us. And we are all ready to make this thing happen. We are going to switch from procedural internal discussions to more substance 
subjects and subject sub uh, discussions which will affect you. I can't promise that you really like everything we, we are going to do in the next months and the next year, but I do think this is going to be very exciting and it's going to be a lot more exchange between all of us to find the best way for the movement to go on. Thank you, Alice. Phoebe or Maria? Maria. Can you hear me? Ah, yeah. okay. So yes, I agree that um, one of the biggest challenges we are going to face this year, without a doubt, is going to have to hire a new ED, not only someone with the best possible qualifications, but someone who is a really good fit for our very special organization, and someone who is going to be able to keep uh, doing what we are doing, but in in an even better um, way, if, it, that, if that's possible. Uh, I hope we can continue doing the really great programs we've been doing. For example, the grants programs with the Funds Dissemination Committee or the Individual Engagements uh, Grants or the participation support that are here to support all the community members to focus on one special project or one special programmatic activity to do. And uh, I hope we can keep do doing things like improving mobile or, you know, uh, the visual editor, things that can attract, uh, that help attract new editors. Thank you, Mary. Thanks. Phoebe? <clears throat> yeah, hi. Um, I, of course, agree with all of my fellow trustees. We have a lot of work to do this year, and there are a lot of things to tackle, and the ED hiring will be uh, first and foremost among them. But I've been thinking a lot about the future and the past. And I've been reflecting on those topics for myself, personally. The future, because I ran for the board again, um, and I had to think about my role in this organization. Um, thank you for electing us. Uh, and thank you for re-electing me. And I've been thinking about the past because um, Partly because this is an anniversary date for me. Monday will be my 10th anniversary uh, as a Wikipedian. <laughs> I made my first edits in 2003 um, in August on the English Wikipedia. Um, it's been a wild ride. And I could not have predicted that I would end up here and that the organization and that the project that I loved um, would also end up in that state. So for all of us, for the board and for the community, I want us to imagine the next 10 years. I want us to share our hopes and dreams and think about, think about our future. Think about that unpredictable space that we will end up in. Um, so I encourage you all to participate in that. Thank you, Phoebe and Jan Bark. Okay, so the good news is I have no other goals to add. <laughs> the bad news is I agree with all the goals we've mentioned so far. Um, I think as a board we have our work cut out for us, and I think it's my job to make sure that as a board we become, we become more effective and we make sure that all of this happens, that all of the things we're talking about, that we're looking back next year, we'll be there in London, and we're looking at each other and we'll be looking at you and be able to explain to you this is what we achieved. Um, we know not everything might be to your satisfaction, but hopefully we'll have a really good ED and hopefully we'll have moved our a discussions board towards substance and will have made some major strides as a movement as a whole, including your goals and aspirations. Thanks, Sean Barton. Thank you, everybody. I'd uh, love to give uh, someone here in the audience a chance. So we have a microphone standing by. If you'd like to raise your hand, please. And uh, we have uh, over here in the front row, right over here, this gentleman in the purple, the purple propaganda visual editor t-shirt. Um, hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, there's been a lot of talk about adding new editors, and of course that is really hugely important. I just wanted to ask, how are you managing to balance the needs of new editors with the needs that the, with the requirements they'll have in, say, a, after a month, a year, two years of editing, and so on? Okay, thank you. Um, who would, anybody in particular would like to uh, tackle that question first about new editors? Um, I mean, I have a few thoughts about that. Thank you, Jimmy, please. Um, so, uh, I think one of the um, one of the really important things uh, is exactly to think about that, that ramping on process. So getting someone to edit 
for the first time, uh, that's actually very, very easy. All we have to do is make the edit button bigger and you can get more people to click edit and then make the save button bigger, you know. Um, the real question is when someone makes that first edit, uh, when they make that fifth edit, that tenth edit, um, are they uh, being appropriately welcomed into the community? Are they being uh, integrated? And that actually ends up being a lot less about the foundation and a lot more about us in the community. Um, the, the question of how do we treat newcomers? Um, how do we treat newbies? Uh, do we still have that sense of um, be bold, uh, ignore all rules, uh, make it so that someone who comes in and they're sincerely trying to do something useful, even if they're not following our existing uh, process and policies, uh, that we welcome them and educate them rather than yell at them. Um, and I think we're still okay about that, um, but there, we, I have to say, uh, I'm speaking mainly about English Wikipedia, but I think it affects all of the, uh, the large and uh, mature language Wikipedias, uh, that we do run a real risk of having uh, too much bureaucracy, too many rules, and in fact, being unwelcoming to people. Um, hear, hear. Hear, hear. So, um, well, with that, with that round of applause, I propose we all go back and delete all the policy pages and start over. <laughs> no, please don't do that. Have you edited something? Um, but I think it's something that, that we all need to carry the message back into our communities to say, wow, you know, there are people in our community who are, you know, sort of policy wonks who are quite annoying and we need to tell them to relax a little bit, particularly on those new editors, right? We all know how to navigate uh, the, 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 the wiki politics, right? But we really need to make sure that we're not forcing someone who simply knows about a particular type of bird uh, to learn about all of our, you know, sort of weird, crazy uh, rules and so forth, so. Thanks, Jimmy. Phoebe, did you want to, yeah? Sure, I'm curious, I don't see them, but I'm wondering if the group from Kazakhstan is here, the students? Ah, uh, they had to leave. leave. Okay, there was a group of 30 students from Kazakhstan here. They were fantastic. 40 students were 40, 40. 46. 46. <laughs> Citation needed. <laughs> um, they're great. They all came to my session yesterday on open access. I'm not sure how much they got out of it, but they asked at the end, uh, their professor asked um, us to speak on how to inspire that group of students to edit Wikipedia. And I think that's our fundamental question, being inspirational, and being inspirational in such a way that it encourages people to join. Thanks, Phoebe. Um, I'm gonna grab a quick question from the, from the meta uh, list that we were sharing earlier. It's straightforward, what do you think of the visual editor? I have a view. Um, I think the visual editor is a lot better than it was just three or four weeks ago. Um, I think there was a lot of, uh, a lot of angst um, about it. Uh, there were some bugs, some of them uh, show-stopping bugs, but those are uh, either fixed or on the way to being fixed. Um, so I'm excited about it. Um, I'm uh, making a commitment myself uh, to always and only use the visual editor. Now that's an easy commitment for me because I'm basically a talk page troll, so I don't actually bump into that much because it's not enabled yet on the, on the t discussion pages, but um, uh, because I think that you know, a lot of the things that the foundation needs, uh, and this actually goes, goes to the, the previous question as well, is the, the visual editor has to be good for newbies, but it also has to be good for very experienced editors. And that's not trivial to do. It's a massive and difficult uh, engineering and design problem. And so one of the things that's very easy to do is to start to use the visual editor, try to do something advanced, see that it's not working, and say, to hell with it, I'm going back to wiki text. And that's fine, right? Particularly if you've got something you wanna get done, but I think we should all really try as often as possible, go back to the visual editor and actually learn the way to do things quickly and efficiently in the visual editor. And if there's something that you, you think, oh, if only 
this were changed, it would make things much more efficient. Let's carry those messages back to the foundation because the developers, um, as good as they are, the designers as good as they are, uh, they have not made you know, 43,000 edits to Wikipedia articles um, and there's gonna be things that they overlook. And I think one of the things that we really have to avoid is uh, high emotions and anger uh, between the you know sort of the community versus the foundation community versus the d developers because everybody's trying to get to the same place so those are my thoughts and you know, Patricio you are interested yeah. in answering as well go ahead okay um, yeah I, I, as many of you my uh, uh, my personal experience with the visual editor was to test it because I wanted to uh, see how it feel y using it and perhaps to report some bugs. Uh, and of course, uh, it's a tool that will be first uh, used by UBIS, but it is going to be in the near future a powerful tool for also experienced editor. But I, I wanted to share with you a personal experience a month ago. Uh, I went to an editathon organized by Wikimedia Argentina. Uh, there was a important group there, about 50 people, most of them never edited Wikipedia before. We met at a former secret uh, detention and torture center of the last dictatorship in Argentina that is now a museum. And I was thrilled because we didn't have to explain markup edition to anyone. And anyone was editing after the first two or three minutes. And I said, wow, this is actually working. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Shaki, did you want? No, no? similar to Great. This. Jan Bart, yeah, you're next. Go ahead. Yeah, so if our goal is to have the whole world uh, be able to share all their knowledge, I think that the visual editor is the most important step, the next most important step to making sure we lower those barriers. Um, and then the next idea, the next step will be even more impact. I mean, if we're talking about those uh, South African school children who have 90% have phones, how about Wikipedia Zero Plus so they can all edit Wikipedia from their phone visually and make sure that it can contribute without any other barriers. I mean, there's so many barriers and every barrier we take away is essential. Wonderful. And Alice, yes, please go ahead, Alice. So I think we have to just uh, realize that when we look today into our projects, we see something which is really old fashioned. We love this kind of uh, design. We love this way of, uh, this look of an internet which is 15 years old or more. And uh, we, are, we are used to use it and we, we love it as it is, but it is dusty. It's not attractive. I think there's so much room to make more of it and the visual editor is the first step to make the whole thing modern sexy, attractive, just inviting for everyone, for readers and for contributors. Thanks, Alice. So let's take another question from the floor. Uh, there's a gentleman on the red sitting here right at the immediate next to the aisle. Thank you, I'm Christian from Italy. I'm uh, vice president of uh, Wikimedia Italia and also in the FTC, but I wanted to ask a question that maybe sounds a little <coughs> off tracking because we, I am a Wikipedian, but I have lots of friends which are in uh, the sister projects. I have friends who spend their day talking about Wikisource <laughs> and uh, Wikiquot. And, uh, but here, here I listen, the most of discussion are about Wikipedia. So what do you think about uh, the future, the future of sister projects. The future of sister projects. Samuel, please. I think that Wikisource and Wikidata are going to end up being much larger than Wikipedia. And I think we see now. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, yes. Today already we can see large archives that are starting to learn 
how to partner with both of those projects. And they have millions of records. And now sometimes some of the discussions on Wikidata are about how to keep people from posting too much and poisoning the namespace too early. Uh, not because it won't eventually be part of the project, but because you should have balance as you grow. And I think that as soon as we have a second project like Wikidata that's growing at the same speed, we'll start to learn to improve our language so that we're again talking about all the sister projects and not just about Wikipedia. Thank you, Samuel. Phoebe, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, this is the question of how to add a new sister project and, and, and what their future is going to be has you know dif been difficult for a long time. Um, I think it's our responsibility as a community aboard uh, to uh, make that process easier. But I actually wanted to talk about a thought that I've been working on this week. There's a small community of us here who are, li who are consider themselves librarian Wikipedians or maybe Wikipedian librarians. Um, and we've been having really great sessions and talking a lot to each other. And uh, I think that the future of sister projects might be more integration with GLAM activities, getting people in those cultural institutions to work on Wikisource and Wikidata and Wiktionary and all the rest. Um, uh, I think there's real, real opportunities there that we have just barely scratched the surface of. Thanks, Phoebe. Maria? Hi, Christian. Thanks for your question. Um, I happen to contribute to Spanish Wikinews, and I've made a few contributions to English Wikinews as well, and obviously to Commons. And it's true what you say, sometimes the focus is too much on Wikipedia, and we tend to forget we have other small projects with small, very engaged communities that they do need uh, support. Uh, I think we were all very excited when Wikidata exist, ex started existing. It was the first time a new project uh, came and we all went there to try to help. I think I was even a temporary admin for a little while. And um, I think we need to try to find out way, um, ways to focus how could we can make synergies between the projects because I think um, it's not only just Commons and Wikipedia. Uh, we're seeing it now with Wikidata and Wikipedia. Uh, we can do similar things with Wikisource, Wikinews, and try to remember that those communities exist and try to make them feel a little bit loved and not forget about them and taking, take them into consideration. For example, Visual Editor at some point will be in the sister projects as well. We'll have to ask them uh, uh, for their feedback, what do they need, etc. Thanks, Maria. And Patricio, please go ahead. Yes, just a little thing to challenge my friend S.J. I think Commons is going to be the biggest project. But, uh, but uh, I, I also want to say something about Wikisource. I think it's growing really fast and is uh, growing uh, also uh, with a uh, with commons, because uh, I know many libraries and universities, at least in, in my country, that are actually uh, uploading the original documents to commons and linking them to the uh, digital text in Wikisource. And well, they've been doing this for a couple of years up now, but uh, this kind of activities is being increased, and I, I think this is really, really interesting. Wonderful. Anyone else? No? Uh, so I just okay, want to ahead. say Commons is already the largest wiki project. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Let's take one more question here uh, from the audience, and I'm looking around. Uh, Denny, is, is stand up a little bit so we can, so the microphone can see you. That gentleman right there in the gray shirt, please. Hi. Um, I'm Danny, and I'm pretty good at starting stuff, so like the Croatian Wikipedia, Semantic Wiki, uh, Media Wiki, or Wikidata. And um, the following is a little bit emotional for me, so sorry if I break. Um, I'm the outgoing project director of Wikidata, and in the last year, Wikidata managed to uh, do stuff like become the sixth most active project on, um, um, together with the Russian and Japanese Wikipedia. And we removed more than 240 million language links from the Wikipedia, so it don't have to be uh, maintained anymore. And um, a number of other access. And I would actually like, to, because I'm worried about the future of Wikidata, 
and I worry about the future sustainability of the development of Wikidata. I would like to ask the community if they could offer me here um, some indication about what you think about Wikidata. So just to everyone to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Given that, I would also like to ask the board to keep in mind during the next few months mm -hmm. about the future sustainable model for development for Wikidata because we are not finished yet and we need a bit more development love than a lot of the other projects. So, and thanks for SJ for pointing it out already a few times. Thank you, Denny. Bishako, so some response to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Denny. Actually, Denny, I want to follow up with a question, which is, uh, and maybe you can answer this briefly now and later we can talk. Why, is there something particular that makes you worried about the sustainability? Um, I'm not sure about if the structures that we have currently are the most suitable to um, keep a sustainable development of Wikidata in, in the way that we have now. So the, the financing structures, the organizational structures, and so on. And I think that asking here openly and asking the board is uh, a major way to actually ensure that we, not that we um, don't fail in continuing to support for Wikidata because of some organizational stupidity. Yeah, so I, I'd like to comment Go on ahead, this. Jimmy. I, I think uh, that's actually, um, it's a very valid uh, request, and it is actually something that I hadn't given much thought to, but which I will now give uh, more thought to. And what uh, occurs to me is to think, when we're talking about sister projects as well, uh, Wikidata is quite important and quite critical in lots of ways uh, as a support for uh, Wikipedia, but also as its own independent project that's very interesting. Um, when I think about uh, Wiki News, which of course um, is a wonderful project, but one which has struggled uh, to find its place, um, which has, I, I think we can say, has never become a massive success. Um, and one of the simple reasons is that the foundation has never um, invested a lot of engineering resources. The, the software is not well suited to doing what Wiki News wants to do. We could, you know, if you're, if you're a huge fan of Wiki News, you may be angry or sad or whatever about that. I'm not making any advocacy, I'm just pointing out this is one of the things that can happen. And so if we think, ah, oh, Wikidata is really great, but we don't actually think about what are the resources needed uh, to support it, it could end up like Wiki News, which is a great idea that never really blossomed. So I'm going to take your words to heart. Thank you, Jimmy. I'm going to do, we'll do another question from, uh, from Eddie here. We want to cover this one. Um, the grants program. Um, we're wanting to hear if you could tell us a little bit where I think it's going. And I may start, Patricio, with yeah. you that, with that question. Yeah. Well, during the last year, uh, we had a very interesting time with the launch of the FTC, which is a community committee that uh, evaluates annual plans for uh, our chapters. And uh, and also in this year, uh, the grant making team of the foundation has been doing an amazing job because, um, uh, you know, the, the, there's a continuous need for evaluation and, and improvement. For example, this, this uh, next round, the FTC made what might be seen as a little small improvement that is uh, the applicants may submit a letter of intent uh, several months before actually submitting their application, but did this allows uh, uh, an ongoing dialogue several months before <coughs> actually submitting their proposal, a, a dialogue I, I mean with uh, the grant making team and with the FTC itself. Um, uh, I also think that uh, the, the grants program is uh, doing an, uh, an amazing job and, 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 and the thing is that uh, you know, this is a continuous process. And uh, they are doing uh, really hard work in trying to uh, see uh, how to measure success, which is, I think, the thing in which uh, need more improvement. Um, and during this con continuous process, uh, we know better about uh, uh, 
good uh, applicants have done in the past. Uh, so uh, in this dialogue, foundation and applicants can uh, focus better on their efforts, uh, make better applications, and, uh, and, and also uh, now we are beginning to learn how to measure success. That is, how to measure the impact of the activities we are, we are running. The, the, I think that uh, is what, what we most need at, at this time. Uh, we do really cool things, but uh, most of the time we don't know which one of these cool things are working really well and which are just for fun. So uh, uh, I think uh, just to answer the question that uh, Brain Making Team and FTC and uh, GAC and, uh, are doing an amazing job and uh, they are, are really committed to improve day after day uh, uh, the whole process. Thanks, Patricio. Bishaka and then Yampar. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, when I first heard of the FDC, I thought it was one of the most radical and revolutionary ideas that I had thought of, heard about. And that's because in my day job, I work in a nonprofit and we work with traditional grant makers. And the truth is that nobody, nobody, trusts volunteers to give away like $8 million, right? It's unheard of. So what I want to say is that in concept, it was mind-blowing. I think in execution, it has really lived up to its potential. It's got the rigor. What we did not want is a situation where you sort of have a loosey-goosey kind of system because you sort of assume that that's what volunteers will do. And that is absolutely not what it is. So it's very, very rigorous. I like that. It's moving towards measuring impact. And I think the individual engagement grants also allow individuals enough flexibility to experiment, etc. So I think we're sort of moving towards building a superstructure where we have different pieces for different parts of the movement. And in closing, actually, I just want to say one thing which perhaps some of you will not like, but that when I look at it through the lens of my day job, I really do feel that all the entities within the Wikimedia universe are born with a silver spoon in their mouth <laughs> because they have the Wikimedia name. And I think as people who apply for funds, it is incumbent on all of us to recognize that and to really mark our requests for funding with a great sense of responsibility to the larger movement and to what these funds come in for. Thank you, Vishaka. <laughs> Jan Bart, go ahead. Yeah, so a final remark I want to make is what, what I think is really special about uh, our movement and about the way we do things, that even if we do uh, things in a completely non-traditional way, we proceed to make them even more non-traditional. I think the fact that besides the really thoughtful people on the FDC, the fact that we have a, a public process in which everything can be seen, can be followed, and everyone's free to comment, people that didn't quite make it on the FDC will still comment on the proposals. As I was getting up here, Anna Suya came to, uh, said to me, oh, if they ask about grant making, tell them we're going to go to re community review on effectiveness in the coming years. I mean, those are the kind of things that are really exciting to have all of us involved in deciding where does the money go, and what should be the criteria, and how, all are, how well are we doing with the money that we're spending all over? Thanks, Jean Bart. Um, there's a gentleman here. Do you want to stand up a little bit in the green or shirt? Can you find this gentleman in the second row, please? Right there. He's standing up. There we go. Thank you. I'm Tin Chorotegan from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I'd like to thank Wikipedia. Uh, this is a great opportunity for our languages. and. Uh, Partly, Wikipedia doing some part of mission of UNESCO, and I'd like to ask uh, uh, about any uh, cooperation between UNESCO and Wikipedia, because we have some uh, small languages, indigenous languages, and if uh, UNESCO will uh, support it, then uh, Wikipedia will be uh, started in Hakka, Tuba, and other uh, small languages in. Siberia and in uh, other uh, parts of the world. Uh, for our uh, Kyrgyz language, we passed uh, the um, level for uh, sustainable development and uh, hopefully will continue it. 
this guy is a leader of the uh, young Wikipedia in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, And uh, my uh, another question is, you know, in uh, some authoritarian regimes, you are regarded as wiki spying, not Wikipedia, <laughs> and they are trying to block. But some other uh, authoritarian regimes are uh, trying to contribute to work with you. Uh, and what is your, uh, you know, uh, assessment of those uh, government uh, involvement? Thank you. Thank you very much. So the first part of the question was collaborations with UNESCO programmatic. Does anybody want to address that one? I'm not personally familiar with many of the, those activities. Um, I know that there have been some, some discussions about it. We certainly heard a lot about it over the last couple of years, but it's an interesting uh, question also to bring to the, many of the participants here. Um, your second question about uh, potential collaborations with governments around censorship. Can I direct that question immediately to anybody in particular? Um, Jimmy. <laughs> you, you made the um noise. It's you. I talk about this a lot. Um, so I think that it's, uh, you know, one of the things that is really um, powerful about our movement is that the fundamental idea of Wiki uh, is that everyone has a right to participate uh, in the creation of the grand human story of, uh, of knowledge. And that is an idea which for uh, certain <coughs> philosophically inclined authoritarian states um, ought to be very, very frightening to them um, because it's uh, very much at odds with their view of the world. But it turns out they're usually not um, that philosophical um, authoritarian states. They're actually worried about very specific things that might cause them trouble. Um, and so we need to be mindful of that um, and, and realize that there are ways uh, that uh, even states that are very difficult uh, environments for the volunteers to work in um, uh, can permit Wikipedia and, uh, and should permit Wikipedia. Um, I'm always very happy to help um, in any way that I can uh, with those kinds of issues because it's my, my personal uh, passion. Uh, but we also have to realize um, sometimes there's not a lot that we can do uh, simply because um, you know, if I speak out against censorship in a particular place at a particular time, um, that doesn't necessarily put any real pressure on them. They actually don't care what I think. In other cases, though, there are uh, states who are really trying uh, to present a more open face uh, to the world, um, who really, um, whether it's they're legitimately uh, trying to change, uh, which is what we hope for, or whether at least trying to look like they're trying to change, um, they have a good reason to say, actually, we, we want uh, Wikipedia to, to be allowed, um, even though we're gonna block certain pages or whatever. So I think these are ongoing uh, difficult problems. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to have a conversation with anybody and to, to teach me about what's going on in your particular environment, uh, because it's very helpful for me in my uh, public diplomacy and also in, in private diplomacy if I uh, have the opportunity to meet with uh, you know, someone from the government of a, whatever state. Uh, to, the more I understand about the situation, the more I'm able to say something that may be more effective. Uh, so uh, that's you know, my view. And I think it's something that all volunteers should be interested in. Um, it's very easy to be complacent in various places uh, that this is, yes, of course, they, they're doing something uh, bad in some part of the world I don't know much about. Um, but I think that it's really, uh, it's, it's a fundamental issue of human rights that we should all care a lot about. Thanks, Jimmy. Phoebe, did you want to answer that one quick as well? Uh, no, I want to say something before we break. That's all. You got it. Um, we are going to do that. We have to honor the time schedule, so I'll reiterate that all of these folks are going to be here for the next couple of days, and they're, they're going to be visible around this afternoon. Um, we are going to move to uh, some remarks from Jan Bart. Did you want to add anything else first, Phoebe, or did you want to? I'm going to invite. Uh, yeah, I first. just I just wanted to say real quick. Um, these sessions we've done them every year. They're always both too long because they start early in the morning, and too short because there's never time for enough. There's never enough time for everyone's questions. 
we recognize that every year the board talks about how to make this better and it's always unsatisfying because there's always unanswered questions and there's always things people want to say and I just want to reiterate what Jay said we are all accessible we're accessible here in person we're accessible online on the wikis I am extremely easy to find on the wikis and you can send me an email um, ask us stuff but also I want to recognize that in this room are probably the most experienced leaders in Wikimedia. Just the people I can see who I know. The collective experience in this room is immense. And I think we can all learn from each other as well. So let's just keep that conversation going. Richard, you very quickly. Yes, uh, I'd like to add uh, uh, just, just one thing, for, forgive me. Um, when we were at this very same session in Wikimania in Buenos Aires, I think there was only one woman on the stage that was Kat. Mm. And there was a really wise uh, journalist uh, on the public that said, well, you all talk about diversity, about uh, engaging every person in the world, but you can all from the North and there's only one woman. So I'd like to celebrate that uh, this board now, half of its members are women and uh, and also that a few of us come from the south and that, that I think that is also important thank you okay so most of you whoa, whoa no <laughs> okay thank you most of you probably know that over the past months we uh, have said goodbye to two different board members who are both uh, have been our board chair. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk a little bit about Ting, which is kind of strange because it's not, um, it's four o'clock in the morning in Germany and the reason why uh, that's strange is because he's actually in Germany. He was planning to come to Wikimania until about a month ago and then his work told him they have a deadline for a project and he really has to stay. So I'm going to be here talking about Ting, who will not be here, but in the end I'll just ask you all to crouch in for a goodbye photograph or something. Um, Ting is one of those board members who joined us from the community who we didn't know very much about, but had very much unexpected talent, which actually all of you, every time you seem to elect someone, we are like, wow, these people, they have all these unexpected talents which are really useful in the board. Um, he was a board chair for two years. Um, he's a quiet person, and that's, those are always the people that you're like, there's always people talking a lot, and then when there's a quiet person, when they speak, everybody sort of shuts up and listens, and they're like, wow, that's really good. <laughs> you have people who, um, in discussions, always defend their own viewpoint, and they're, they're always saying, Look, but, but no, it has to be A, it has to be A. And when Ting felt that the room was going, everyone was thinking along the lines of A, he would be, how about B? Just to push everyone into a different corner and sort of promote the debate, and it's really effective. Um, I really enjoyed working with him. I think I also wrote a long mail on the Foundation L, or sorry, uh, Wikimedia L list, just to sort of reflect on that. But the, I think one of the most important things is throughout, the, everyone who's on a board knows this, that there's tough times and there's good times. And Ting is always sort of a steady factor during this, especially during his chair uh, function when he was always telling us, you know, this might be a little bit of drama now, but we're looking over this and in the long term, let's learn the lessons we can. And that's always one of the most important things as a chair is to look back and see what lessons you've learned. We, I will not go into all the incidents, but we've learned a lot of lessons as a board and I think it's a movement, how to work with each other. And I think, was a very, I think that Ting was a very integral part of that. Um, the funny thing is that I think he's, the, he's a chairperson uh, who traveled most across the world. I think a lot of chapters invited him and he was always going out to different chapters and talking to them. And it's so interesting to see that he came back with all these reports and like, wow, what's going on in that country? There's are stories we would never have found out otherwise. And it's really, it really gave us a lot of energy about everything that's going on in the movement. Because one of the reasons why we're all involved, at least I am as a board member, I'm assuming most of the other board members are, there are so many special people across the world and I think that Ting managed to point out a lot of them to us, but he also is a very special person, and I'm sure he'll be back in the future to take on a more active role again. But for now, I'd like to ask you to thank Ting Chen to be, uh, for two years of chair and many more years of board.
And then we come to uh, another departure, and for that I'd like to invite the former chair of the board of the Wikimedia Foundation, Michael Snow, to say a few words about Kat Walsh. So, uh, thank you, Jan Bart, for the opportunity to uh, come up and, and say a few words. Uh, Kat, I, I first met Kat uh, back in uh, 2006 at, at Wikimania in Boston. Well, uh, that's the first time I met her in person. I had uh, obviously met her on, on Wikipedia before. Uh, and uh, the, the reason I... You know, one of the things that I particularly remember uh, about uh, that experience was that at, at that point, uh, the, we, we were just about to have uh, an election for the, the board. Uh, uh, Angela Beasley, uh, uh, those of you that know, know her, had, had just resigned, and so we were, we were going to have an election to, to fill her seat. And... Uh, I, I had actually been approached of, about uh, running in, in that election, and I, I'd said, no, I, I can't do that. The, the timing didn't work for me. Uh, but, but Kat uh, came and uh, talked to me and, and asked me for, for some advice about uh, what, what I thought about the prospect of her running. Did, did I... Did I think she would make a, a good candidate? Did, uh, you know, kind of, I, I don't remember exactly what, what she asked, but it was it was along those lines, and I it, it was you know I I was thrilled uh, first of all the the to to hear that she was considering it because Cat would you know even uh, even back then it, it was clear that Cat was one of those people. Who, uh, Jan Bart sort of uh, said this, the same thing about Ting, but uh, not not that she's necessarily quiet, but but one of the things that particularly uh, struck me about Cat and and in in watching her uh, and 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 has continued to be clear to me in working with her is, is that. She is, she is never someone who is going to uh, be uh, out there aggressive and trying to, uh, it, it, as we sometimes do in, in our debates in, on, on, on the projects, try, trying to push something through and, and Get it done and have our way, but but she she was always someone who could kind of take take a look at things from a bigger per picture and and have a larger perspective that included not just what she thought but what the the community at large uh, would would think. And I, I think her ability to to do that and to encourage us to take a step back and really look at things from a, a more inclusive and a, a broader perspective and and also her, her ability to to present that in in a really calm and reasoned and measured approach uh, is, is one of the things that, that I really appreciated about Kat and so I you know, I, I encouraged her to to run. I don't, I don't know how, how much uh, impact my advice had at, at the time, but I, I thought it was a, a, a great idea, and, and you know, she she was uh, she d did subsequently uh, get elected to the board. And I, I think if if I'm right, Kat has been elected to the board more times than anybody else. I think SJ has now tied her, but <laughs> that's that's an impressive accomplishment and. Uh, uh, so, so I, I think uh, that that shows that the the community as well has recognized uh, that 
that talent that, that Kat has, and I'm, I'm grateful for her, her service uh, in, in the uh, seven or so years that, that she's been on the board, and including her, her service as chair. And so I'd like, you, like to ask you to join with me in a round of applause for Kat for her <laughs> service. <laughs> Thank you all for that, and like Denny, I think I'm going to apologize in advance if I get a little bit emotional, so just to warn you, uh, this is my eighth Wikimania, uh, so I didn't make it to the first one, and I heard about the first one, I started editing in 2004, and I thought, you know, it might be fun to go, but I, I was kind of shy, and it was far away, and I wasn't going to know anybody, so, so I should probably just not go. And about, uh, about a week beforehand, I thought that this was the dumbest decision and I should have gone. And, and that, was, then that was right. Uh, <laughs> every Wikimania I've been to, uh, throughout the year, the things we do are hard and they wear us down and they're difficult and sometimes we forget that we really love each other and this is a really great thing. We get so wrapped up in the arguments and we get so wrapped up in how difficult everything is that we forget that. Wikimania every year has reminded me how much I love this project and how much I love the people. So the thing I like about Wikimania is that we're showing the best of ourselves here, the diversity of the projects that we're working on and also the way that, that we think about each other. Uh, coming to Wikimania in 2006, which was where I met Michael and where I met a lot of the people uh, who have become my best friends and my closest colleagues, was really where I found the community where I thought that this is, the, this is where I belong, these are the people that I belong with. So in some ways, this is a completely different conference than it was in 2006, and I think about half of the room, this is their first time there. And in some ways, it, it is exactly the same, and I think that's exactly right. So on a broad scale, the work of the board is actually, I think, to determine what, what should be different and what should remain the same. Uh, I don't know how many people have seen the guiding principles document that, that came out not too long ago that Sue worked uh, very hard on and really encapsulates a lot of the, the things that we've tried to articulate for a long time and just hadn't set down in the same place. And the thing I really like about that is these are the things that, that should remain the same, that if we wanted to change them, we'd have to have a really good time thinking about who we are and why we wanted to change them. Principles like the idea that everybody should be able to participate in the creation of knowledge, everybody should have access to that knowledge, and no matter what knowledge that is. And there are other things that should be different. Uh, if, you told me in 2000, if you told me in 2004 when I started editing that I would be pushing for people to start thinking outside the boxes of wiki text, that maybe, maybe not everybody should be using that. If you told me that the Wikimedia Foundation shouldn't just be politically neutral, that we should become outspoken in advocacy for the things that we believe in outside the projects, I'm not sure if I would have believed you. Uh, so, on the board, that's one of the most important things that we have to do. And now that I'm leaving the board, uh, fortunately, I also think that that's true for the movement. For us identifying uh, as a movement, we really need to think of what are the things that make us who we are? What are the things we must keep the same? And what are the things that we can change? And the reason it's so important to do that is because it's difficult. We don't have to fight for the things that are easy to keep, we just keep them. We have to fight for the things that are difficult. We have to struggle with them. And sometimes they go wrong along the way. Sometimes we start along the wrong path. Uh, we really have to think about those. That's part of who we are as much as, uh, as, much as editing, as much as doing our local projects. All of them are necessary. All of them fit into a bigger picture. And I'm really thankful to have been part of that big picture in this role, and I'm looking forward to sticking around in the next one. Some things change, and some things stay the same. Thank you.
Okay, just one more thing. Sue Gardner uh, and the leadership team for the foundation, could you guys come up here very quickly? Eric, Jeff Garfield, Gail, if she's here. Thank you, just really quickly. And I'm gonna throw it back over to Jimmy and Jan Bart, please. Great. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep this kind of short because apparently the Hong Kong team is freaking out that we're going so long. Um, so what I wanted to say just uh, very briefly is um, I have uh, two little girls, um, two daughters. Um, my one daughter is uh, two-year-old and the other daughter is 12 years old. Um, and the two-year-old uh, is very uh, sweet, charming, very bright, very intelligent, and she also has absolute insane screaming tantrum fits, as all two-year-olds do. And then uh, the 12-year-old is very much a contrast. The 12-year-old is also uh, cute, charming, and uh, can program in Ruby. And she actually never has, uh, she never has screaming fits, right? She's a completely calm, insane person. And the, the transition for, for human beings to get from two to 12, um, it more or less happens naturally, but there is a role for the parent to help grow up uh, the child, to, to teach them uh, proper behaviors, uh, to encourage them, to inspire them. Um, organizations, on the other hand, may or may not grow up. Uh, they, in fact, can remain dysfunctional for a very long period of time. Uh, when Sue uh, came to the foundation, uh, I'm not sure exactly the, the timing or how many years old it was, but it was a screaming tantrum two-year-old. Uh, it was cute and charming, and it had a lot of potential, um, but it was unruly and uh, didn't really know how to go to the toilet properly. Um, <laughs> and Sue has helped the foundation grow up. And uh, the foundation, uh, well, the, the project is now actually uh, 12 years old, but the, the foundation is like a 12-year-old. It's a 10, how old is the foundation? I have no idea, 10, anyway. It's, it's, uh, it's matured into a charming young child um, who can program in... Uh, Parsoid, and and, and um, so uh, th this wouldn't have happened uh, if it weren't for Sue. Um, she's really brought the organization along uh, to help it become uh, where it is now, um, and she's given it a good foundation and a base uh, so that hopefully it won't become uh, one of those really angry teenagers. Uh, I think I think it's going to be one of those calm teenagers now. Um, so uh, the one uh, last thing I wanted to say is that, you know, we showed the video at the end of my uh, keynote, uh, you know, a thank you video and so forth, uh, but uh, they actually cut out uh, a piece of what um, I did for my video. Uh, they just showed where I said, thank you, Sue. Uh, they didn't show the part where I said, uh, thank you, Sue, and please don't go. <laughs> so thank you, Sue. So I've, I've, I've written so many things and said so many things about this. I just have one thing to add. Um, can all the Wikimedia staff people get up, please? Because if you want to see one thing that will happen throughout the growth is the Wikimedia staff people, we've grown as an organization, but all these people can be recognized by the fact that they're standing up, but also recognized by the fact that they're incredibly motivated, smiling, walking around here. This is the awesomest thing they've ever done this year. They're motivated throughout the rest of the year, but they're so excited about being part of this movement. And I love the fact that Every one of the people that we seem to be hiring under Sue's management is so motivated and is so incredibly passionate about our mission. Thank you so much, Sue. And thank you. So they gave me three minutes. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to stick to that. I've, I've worked with uh, Sue for about six years, first as a board member, um, then as a staff member, as the deputy director of the foundation. And you might think I would share some amusing personal anecdote with you. I will not. Um, first of all, because Sue is like the honey badger. She doesn't give a sh about such things. <laughs> she also doesn't have a personal life, nor do I. <laughs> so I will focus instead on the things she actually does care about. Um, one of the first things I asked her when I started working with her is, Sue, what drives you? What, what are the things you do care about? What makes you tick? And what she said is, impact. It's very simple. All I care about is impact. 
All I care about is the impact through my work. Okay. And that might sound like self-evident, but it's actually not. A lot of people care about other things. A lot of people care about money, status, about being liked. <laughs> Sue doesn't care about being liked. <laughs> A lot of people uh, in positions of power care about control, how much influence they have over others. Sue doesn't care about control either. In fact, she uh, realized early on in her career that in order to achieve impact, you often had to let go of control. And she delegated as much authority as possible to every individual who worked as part of the foundation. But I want to tell you three examples of, of impact through work that I think are underappreciated and that we don't, don't talk about enough. And two of them are about money, and that is probably why we don't talk about them so much, which is good. We shouldn't be talking about money. We should be talking about the work. The first thing I want to talk about is where does the money come from? When Sue joined the foundation, our business model was pretty unclear. We had taken advertising off the table very early on for good reasons, but a lot of things were still on the table. We were doing a little bit of business development on the side, a little bit of negotiations of various kinds, a little bit of trademark licensing, a little bit of foundation work, a little bit of major gifts fundraising, and the idea at the time was diversity of revenue is good. Let's, let's look at as many sources as possible to sustain the mission. That was actually a terrible idea. And in fact, the one thing that Sue did very early on is to realign and refocus the foundation on one model and one model only. And that is major, uh, not major gifts fundraising, uh, mass giving from a huge amount of uh, individual donors giving an average of uh, $30 or less. Now two million donors uh, in the last year giving an average of uh, $30 or so uh, in our online giving campaigns. And that's huge. It's huge because it means that we're completely financially independent. We're not beholden to a single corporation. We're not beholden to major donors. We're not beholden to any one source uh, or, or any one entity uh, that provides funding for the organization. And uh, that's a really, really big deal and a lasting legacy uh, of Sue's career. Um, in her presentation, Sue talked a little bit about the global north, global south divide of grant making and financial distribution of funds. And one of the challenges she took on courageously was to talk about that openly with chapters and with the movement. Whether it was okay, whether it was appropriate that if you're in a wealthy country, if you run an organization in a rich country, you should be entitled to a large amount of money simply by being there. And if you're in a poor country, your organization should be basically based on project level grants or maybe based on fundraising that can raise like ten, twenty thousand dollars this is the way a lot of nonprofit organizations operate. They have nice offices in rich countries and, and they don't have large operations in developing countries because the money isn't there. Sue recognized that that was not an acceptable outcome for the Wikimedia movement and that is why we have the Funds Dissemination Committee. Its creation was extremely controversial and contentious and continues to be and it had to be, but it had to be a discussion and a conversation that we had to have and that we have to continue and I'm very proud of Sue are uh, leading us through that conversation and, and helping us realign and rethink how we share funds in order to support our mission everywhere uh, in rich countries as well as poor countries. And the last thing I want to mention is that when we talk about what is the foundation trying to do, we all know we're trying to bring in new editors. We're trying to bring in new contributors. But the reason we all know that is that Sue has focused the organization and has helped focus the movement on that one goal. You wouldn't believe how many organizations are out there who stare at crisis in the face and ignore it, who have no idea what their biggest problem is or how to solve it, or have no ability to align resources, let alone a larger community around a large challenge like that. And one of the things Sue did is to have that conversation with the staff and with the community for the last few years that Wikimedia needed to become more open, needed to bring in new contributors, a conversation that continues and that is far from finished. And I think we should be very proud of Sue for focusing and helping focus attention on that, which is still the single biggest challenge uh, facing us as a movement. So I want to thank Sue for everything she's done. It's been a huge pleasure working with her and it'll be impossible to replace you, Sue. But at the same time, we deal in the impossible every day. 
So I'm very grateful for your courage, for all your hard work, and for your love for the movement. Thank you, Sue. I am very, very, very grateful um, to you guys uh, for all of this, and I am somewhat sorry for you guys because this has been really long, and it was me, and it was Ting, and it was Kat, and there's a lot of goodbyes. It does make me feel like we're kind of, we're entering some kind of new phase as a thing. Um, anyway, I will wrap it up and turn it back over to the local people, but thank you so much for this morning, you guys. Thank you so much. Obviously, we are running out of time, so uh, short notice. And the shuttle to the, to the beach party will be right here, right at the JCA foyer at 7, 17, oh, that's 5.15 p.m. And no bus shuttle from BU dorms, that is the short notice. And now we need to head to the group photo very, 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 very fast. So pick up your things and go up to the foyer now.